The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday. We're looking at Amos chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, the Old Testament reading from Pentecost, oh, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Amos wrote, Woe to you who are complacent in Zion, and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria, you notable men of the foremost nation, to whom the people of Israel come. Go to Calne and look at it. Go from there to Great Hamath, and then go down to Gath in Philistia. Are they better off than your two kingdoms? Is their land larger than yours? You put off the evil day and bring near a reign of terror. My dear friends in Christ, the prophet Amos had a very tough job. He was called to serve largely the people of the northern kingdom of Israel about 750 years before the birth of Christ. And that makes it about 30 years before the northern kingdom of Israel ended up falling to the Assyrian nation. And now when that northern kingdom fell, what happened is that it never regrouped itself. And because of that, it never regathered. It never gathered itself together. They're known oftentimes as the lost 10 tribes of Israel. And now what God was doing here is he was judging his people because tragically, so many of them were worshiping idols and were rejecting the Lord. Of course, there were some in the land who by the grace of God were believers, but, but the vast majority of the people, they rejected God. They worshiped those idols. And because of that, God sent his judgment on the people. Last week in our Old Testament reading, we heard Amos speak to us and encourage, well, the people of his day and also us in the faithful use of God's blessings. And, and he also talked about a wicked use of those blessings. Now today what he's doing is he's shifting gears a little bit and he's encouraging us not to boast in our strength not to boast in our riches, not to trust in our strength or our riches. And ultimately, as he's saying, don't trust in those things, ultimately he's saying to us that what we'll want to do is trust and boast in the Lord. To trust and boast in the Lord. Amos said, Woe to you who are complacent in Zion and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria, you notable men of the foremost nation to whom the people of Israel come. The message of Amos is addressed primarily to the northern kingdom of Israel, but here he's also speaking to the southern kingdom of Judah as well. And when he talks about the complacent in Zion, well, there he's really talking about the leaders in Israel the southern kingdom in Jerusalem, Zion, Mount Zion, another name for the city of Jerusalem. He's thinking about them because Mount Zion, the place of, that's Jerusalem, the place of the temple. He's speaking to them, and he says also speaking to those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. That's referring to the leaders of the northern kingdom of Israel. Mount Sinai, that was their capital. And that was also the place, well, Mount Zion and Mount Samaria. They're the leaders of both nations, the foremost nation as it's called here. Remember, the Israelite nation together was called to be God's chosen people. They were the people who would have the word of God, the promises, the temple. They would have a savior born as one of them. But now together they were the foremost nation. They were kind of falling apart a bit at this particular time. But now what Amos also says, yeah, to that foremost nation, to those capital cities, 
There the people, they came to Mount Zion and to Mount Samaria because there, there were their leaders. And they looked to those leaders for judgments, um, for their disputes, for their legal matters. They also went to the leaders in those towns, in those capital cities, when they were looking for help in their troubles. Amos is saying here to those complacent leaders in Israel and in Judah, those people who thought they had everything under control, he said, do not boast in your strength. He said, go to Calneh and look at it. Go from there to Great Hamath and then go down to Gath and Philistia. Are they better off than your two kingdoms? In their land, is their land larger than yours? Those three cities, Calne, Hamath, Gath, they were great heathen cities. Perhaps Israel's leaders were thinking of those three great cities and saying, hey, look at our capitals, Mount Zion, Mount Samaria. Look at our great capitals. They are great and powerful like those three great heathen nations. But it's interesting to note, it's interesting to note that these three great cities, Calneh, Hamath, Gath, they were or would soon end up being defeated and fall. They would fall and, well, the northern kingdom of Israel, it would fall about 30 years after this. About 30 years after this time when Amos wrote this letter and the southern kingdom, it also would end up falling soon, about, well, 150 years after Amos wrote this. Amos said to Israel's leaders, you put off the evil day and bring near a reign of destruction. The Lord's coming judgment was not a welcome conversation in the palaces of these capital cities, in the palaces of Jerusalem and Samaria. The people's wealthy, complacent, powerful leaders at that time, it says they had put off the evil day. They put off the whole thought, God had said judgment is coming, judgment is coming because of your rejection, but they put it off. They said, no, 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 it's not coming. And we can think of their reign of terror as their spiritual leadership in which they were encouraging the people to trust in their own strength and not trust in the Lord, to trust in their false gods and not in the Lord. These are some strong words of warning that Amos speaks to the Israelites, to, to the people of Judah, to the people of Israel. Amos is saying to them, and also to us, do not trust in your strength. Do not boast in your strength. He's saying, as the Apostle Paul says, let him who thinks he is standing firm take heed lest he fall. Those are words of warning that we need to hear, but isn't it wonderful also to hear and to know that we don't have to trust in our strength, in our own strength. The Holy Spirit, he has enabled us to trust in the Lord and in his strength. If we trust in our own strength, we're going to fall. But when by God's grace we trust in the Lord and his strength, then we can never fall. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, please help us to never trust in our own strength, but to trust in you and in our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we will never fall. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.